Hello, everyone. This is your neighborhood friendly Zero More coming to you from sunny uh, North Carolina in the United States of America. Um, gosh, it's been so long since I've gotten to really talk to you guys or make any videos or do any kind of uh, Final Nights content. All that stuff, if you guys remember back in uh, October, I think it was, October, November of 2018, uh, I had released uh, TFN 1.5 HD and I was doing a Let's Play with uh, Sparrow McCray, the Asimite Vizier, who was a computer hacker. And uh, and we found out, my uh, wife and I found out that we were having a daughter, our very first child. That was really really exciting well in uh the summer of 2019 she was born and uh she's having a one year birthday coming up uh here shortly we're really really excited about uh she's starting to walk and she's saying dad dad and all that cool stuff so uh your prayers are very much appreciative uh things are going very well here at home uh, unfortunately over the past year and a half to two years that i've been gone uh, I haven't been able to make any videos or do any kind of modding content uh, because, you know, being a dad, it takes time. What can I say? Uh, but uh, as she's approaching one years old, uh, it's kind of freeing some things up for me. I'm really excited to say. And uh, I started tinkering around with uh, the final nights about a month or so ago. And I was just going to just just play for my own fun and amusement. And then, you know, I got bit by the bug and I was like, wow, uh, that'd be really cool if we changed this and we did this. And we and then over here, if we did a little bit of this. And next thing I know, I've got TFN 1.6. HD. <laughs> and, uh, so here we are. I'm back and uh, looks like I'm going to be releasing another patch uh, despite the fact that Bloodlines 2 is just around the corner. Um, I don't know if anyone's going to play this or not. I hope so because there's some really cool stuff uh, that I put into it. But uh, going back to the Sparrow McCray Asimite Vizier uh, Let's Play video I was making, I think I stopped on episode 19 i think that was the last one we were in hollywood uh and unfortunately guys i'm not going to be able to finish that let's play it's going to be dead in its tracks because sparrow mccray was deleted <laughs> a long time ago um you know it's been almost two years and i really apologize i can only keep things on my computer uh, for so long so I very much apologize it was a really cool playthrough but the good news is I'm going to be doing another playthrough 1.6 um, which is going to be uh, doing a spotlight on some of the new things that uh, I've I have put in this uh, recent patch and uh, it should be really cool um, so let's let's talk about uh, the scheduled action items leading up to the release um, the very first video is going to be the one you're watching now, and that's the introduction to TFN 1.6 HD. After that, I plan on putting out a how to install TFN 1.6. Um, and I'm not going to make it another 35 minute video. I got a lot of complaints from people, and I completely understand why I rambled on and on. I tend to do that. I apologize. Um, so I'm going to make a condensed version of just the stuff you guys want to see and know in order to install it. It's very easy. I can make this video in under five minutes. Uh, so I plan on re-releasing a how to install. Now I'll still keep the old video up in case people want to hear me ramble on for 35 minutes. But um, yeah, so hopefully I should <laughs> score some uh, internet points on that. Again, I apologize for uh, the last how to install. It was way too long. And uh, yes, yeah, so moving on after I get that out, I'm actually going to be blending it with another aspect, which is going to be the video game manual. So I wrote a game manual back in like 2014, 2015. It's a really, really good game manual for TFN. It explains all the systems and the weapons and the just all the changes. You know, there, there, there's so many changes in TFN. Um, you know, it's really hard to talk about it during the Let's Play videos. So I made this awesome game manual, and I, I just don't think a lot of people know that it's there. And if they did, they'd probably read it. But reading can sometimes be a drag. 
you know so i was thinking what if i were to go through the game manual with you guys and make a video out of it um and i could actually attach that to the how to install after the five minutes uh, then, then it goes right into the video game manual. So let me know if you, if, you know, if that's something you guys would like, um, and uh, that's something I'd really, really like to do. Um, okay, let's talk about release date. Um, I don't have an actual date yet for 1.6 HD. Um, I'm thinking probably in late June of this month or early July. Today's uh, what the second, third, something like that. Um, yeah, so I'm thinking probably in late June, early July of this year, 2020. Um, I don't, uh, I don't really like to have a really long release date for these things. I like to get them out. I like to get all the content going. Um, let's see here. While uh, leading up to the release date, though, I plan on alpha testing uh, 1.6 HD in the form of a Let's Play video. So I'm going to be doing another Let's Play. With a different clan, of course, it won't be Sparrow McCray. It'll be a completely different new character. Um, you know, as I said earlier, spotlighting the new features so that you guys can see it. Um, however, I have a huge treat that I'm so excited to tell you guys. Um, there are two other YouTubers, awesome, awesome YouTubers, good friends of mine um, by the name of Something Compass, and the other is JT Corpse. And they both have really cool... Uh, channels they do they're like professional youtuber guys i think jt corpse is a streamer on twitter as well um these guys know everything about bloodlines everything about the final nights and they agreed to also also do alpha testing with me um in conjunction with my let's play and they're going to be doing their own let's plays of course it's going to be different clans and different characters so you're going to have three different TFN 1.6 Alpha Test Let's Plays running at the same time, one by me, Zero Morph, one by Something Compass, and one by JT Corp. So you're just going to get bombarded if if, if, if you want to watch lots of 1.6 HD Let's Plays uh, in the next few weeks, expect that you're going to get your your uh, socks blown off on that one because uh, we just got so much content between the three of us coming out to everyone. So um, anyways, okay, so uh, let's go into the bug fixes first. Um, let's see here. There are quite a few bug fixes, some left over from 1.5 and some that I've wanted to get rid of uh, for quite some time. Uh, the very first bug fix uh, was one left over from 1.5 that I found in the Sparrow McRae uh, let's play and that is selling the occult items or the gargoyle pendant gave the vendors a model error um, I'm not going to show you that it just it it would just say model um, Missing model or something like that. Um, I took care of that. It should no longer be an issue in 1.6 HD We should be good. Uh, the next bug fix was a very minor one in the Bali clan description there was a misspelling um, imperceivable um, it wasn't spelled right. That was my bad. I hate misspellings. I think it degrades the quality of a mod. Um, <laughs> so whenever I see a misspelling, I, I feel like a total failure. So that was very embarrassing. I apologize. Uh, the next fix was one I was unable to fix, but I tried, guys. I really tried. I installed Blender. Um, I got the Ash uh, Blender, and I actually removed his necklace. Um, you can't delete vertices in Blender or it'll break the model, but you can move them um, out of the way so that you can't see them and it looks like it's gone. Uh, so yeah, for, so for now that's going to be unfixable for the Ash and Ash lookalike uh, model. I noticed in the unofficial patches, they have yet to fix it. So Wesp uh, and Enten Shrek and all those guys that, you know, Burgermeister, all those guys that work on the unofficial patches if they haven't fixed it it's probably not fixable so um i don't know if i can do it but i tried it didn't work whatever so but i wanted to at least put it in the bug fix uh column in case somebody says hey you know how come you never fixed the ash necklace well um i did i tried <laughs> Okay, um, so this next part I am going to show you guys. Um, I fixed the uh, missing teeth uh, for the Armor 3 Samedi. That's the uh, light, uh, light leather 
armor. I don't know how this happened because I didn't mess with the models, but for some reason, the texture for the uh, teeth of the Semeti were missing. Um, so it was just like a purple and black checkered box. Um, I don't know what the deal is there, but I got that fixed. And then I also noticed something while I was fixing that. I noticed that the armor that you start out with for the Semeti, his teeth, his teeth were like freaking glowing. I mean, it's not like a really bright glow, but the rest of him is shaded. And like in the character sheet, the rest of him is shaded, but then his teeth, it almost seemed like there wasn't any kind of shading or shadowing done on it. So um, I went ahead and took care of that. Uh, you can see from the uh, videos um, that uh, that's been also taken care of. So we are good to go on both of those. All right, so the uh, next uh, bug that we have here uh, is uh, something that's actually been around for a while now. I had put blood markers on the uh, on the blood meter there to the right of the HUD. Uh, the problem is I didn't match them. I didn't line them up with the actual blood. See, you have 15 blood points uh, by default. Every character does. Uh, and there's a spot on the, on the blood meter for each of those 15 spots. But the blood markers that I had made uh, did not line up with those. And now they do, as you can see, uh, from the videos here, as I'm using disciplines, you can see that it actually matches up now, which is really, really handy. Uh, you know, if you want to actually count how many blood points do I actually have left on my character. So that's something uh, that I wanted to fix for a while. And I finally did. Uh, the uh, next uh, bug that I fixed was I finally removed all the Malkavian whispers in dialogue uh, for the Salubri character. So the Salubri character uh, overwrote the Malkavian character because you can only have seven clans, but it was really annoying because as a Salubri, you were hearing whispers that the Malkavians were supposed to hear every once in a while in dialogue. And it was totally immersion breaking. So I finally fixed that. That'll be, that'll be good to go. Um, the next bug was something that plagued my playthrough, my uh, my my Let's Play 1.5 with Sparrow McRae that I complained about a lot was in Club Vesuvius. When you're talking to Velvet, oh my gosh, you could barely hear what she was saying. It was so incredibly annoying. Uh, so what I did is I actually increased her volume, but I also lowered the club music a little bit. And between the two, Velvet going up and the club music going down, you can really hear what she's saying now it is so much better than before so yes <laughs> finally that's that's fixed the next bug um was a really minor one but while i was play testing uh with a bali character for um the the presence discipline i noticed that the beginning armor at the bottom of his shoe were two white stripes and you can actually say see this in uh uh, JT Corpse's playthrough, he did a Bali playthrough, and it's so annoying to watch him run around because I see these two white stripes on the bottoms of his shoes, which are supposed to be shoelaces. Finally got rid of those. Now the bottom of his shoe is completely black, which I know it's a minor thing, but gosh, did it bug the heck out of me uh, because I know I accidentally put it there. <laughs> so uh, let's see here. The next bug was actually one uh, that I introduced when I turned the followers of set into the warriors of set. I removed uh, obfuscate and replaced it with potence, but I forgot to mark potence as a discipline that they're not supposed to use when using the heart of darkness uh, discipline, which is uh, level five. So what happens is your warrior of set um, is able to remove his heart or her heart, um, rip the heart out of their chest and then it makes them nearly invincible for as long as the heart is removed but what was happening was uh you were still able to use potence and you're not supposed to be able to use any discipline when you have your heart removed in fact your your blood meter is all the way down to one blood point and you're not supposed to use any disciplines but you could use potence because i had forgotten to remove that so that is fixed in 1.6 as well um, another bug fix. My goodness, there were so many. Uh, <laughs> I uh, moved Heather 
into the Ventru Tower basement. Um, if you're a Semedi character, he shall no longer be standing in front of Ventru Tower. So what was happening was, you're a Semedi, you're you can't be seen at all. It's not like the Nosferatu in the uh, in the vanilla game. If you are spotted as the Semedi in TFN at all whatsoever, uh, you will instantly get a criminal violation. Well, what was happening was you would be sneaking around and you see Heather and she would run up to you and she starts the dialogue and it would make you appear. Your obfuscate would turn off and then all these people would see you. So then you get a criminal violation while you're in dialogue with her and you're being shot by cops and you're stuck in dialogue with her and you can't get out of it. It was, it was a total mess. Uh, so now if you are the Semedi clan, when you go down into the sewers to, to enter Ventru tower in the basement, she'll be standing there. In fact, I even wrote some dialogue <laughs> that says, you know, Heather, what are you, what are you doing in this basement? How did you track me down into this basement? Um, another bug fix in 1.6 is Apep's semblance. So what was happening was I figured out a way to make the uh, the animal like half snake, half human form. Um, I made it so that the character is now animated in the character sheet. But the problem was whenever you would shape shift in the game, it would create like these little seizures kind of thing. And it, it just, I don't know. I mean, I love the fact that it's animated in the character sheet, but it, I can't stand the fact that when you shape shift, um, it, it, it shakes and it wiggles and it's not supposed to do that. It's not smooth. So I went ahead and put it back um, so that you no longer have those seizures. But your character, when you're in the Apep semblance form, is no longer going to be animated in the character sheet. However, I kept the original models in there. I just renamed them. So if you like the old way, you can easily put it back. Um, so you want to go to the root character or the root folder of your your vampire folder. Go into the TFN folder. Go to models, then character, then monster then animalism underscore beast form. And you're gonna see three files in there um, that all start with the word animated. Remove those animated dot. You remove those, save it, and then that'll put it back um, so that he's animated in the character sheet. Of course, it's gonna re-break your, uh, your, your shape-shifting form. The last bug fix, and this is one, <laughs> this is one, that I, 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 years ago, years ago, like 10 years ago, I thought it'd be really cool if Lily in the medical clinic had blood around her mouth after she, she jumped on Phil and, and, and ripped his neck out. I thought it'd be really cool to have blood. So I added blood to her, but I realized that, uh, she has blood on her mouth when she's sitting in the chair, which why, why in the world would she have blood on her mouth? So it didn't make any sense, but I really liked the blood around her mouth. So I figured out a way to rework the camera and uh, make it so that she doesn't have any blood on her mouth when she's sitting in the chair. But when she gets up, when you unlock the cuffs, she jumps onto the wall and then like jumps off the wall onto Phil and then starts devouring him. And now there is blood on her mouth after that scene, but not before while she's in the chair. And while I was at it, I added blood to Phil's neck. So it looks really, really cool. Check out this scene here. See what you guys think. I think you're going to like it. Hunger. I need it. A drop of it on my tongue, sliding down my throat. The hot flash in my brain lighting up my body. I can smell it everywhere. Blood. Let me go. It's painful. Like I'm going to die. It's calling. Never felt like this before. Let me go. I can smell it. I have to have it. Huh? What? Oh. Huh? What the? You're not supposed to be here. 
But where am I? The heat. Mm, it's never been so satisfying. All of it. I drank until I heard his heart stop and I was sucking on a dry, dead artery. It was euphoric. <laughs> oh man, that was freaking awesome. I don't know about you guys, but that was pretty fun. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about the new content here. Uh, the big the big thing with uh, 1.6 HD is the new coercion system. So what I've done is I've actually completely ripped out uh, the intimidation feat and I've replaced it with the coercion feat. The big change is that there are now 16 new pedestrians, um, four of them in each of the HUDs. And you're going to know who they are because they look different. They've all been reskinned. And you can now walk up to them and attempt to coerce them to rob them of the cash that they have on hand. Um, so it works kind of in a similar way to uh, the uh, computer hacking, you know, like the online banking system where you can not only hack, but you can also now get money sent to you um, when you successfully computer hack a online banking account. Same, same with the lock picking uh, system. Uh, it's really cool because not only do you uh, are you are allowed to get into uh, places you're not supposed to be through lock picking, but you can also now there's boxes everywhere, all all over the place uh, that are locked that you can get into to get new stuff to get new cash. The coercion system's the same kind of thing, except for you're robbing pedestrians, which of course you're going to take a humanity hit uh, for doing that, and they're going to scream, and that's going to uh, summon the police. So after you rob someone, you want to run away. Um, and uh, another another new thing that I did is there are 40 different NPCs that you can coerce through dialogue. And I went through every single one of them and changed them to actually make a lot more sense. Because the way intimidation was set up is sometimes you would have an intimidation line and you would choose it. And then it would the game would penalize you by making the NPC mad and they would start fighting you and all that stuff. Well, now with the new coercion, whenever you see a coercion line and you choose that line, something good is going to happen for you. Of course, it might uh, net you a uh, humanity loss, possibly, or a criminal violation, but it'll be good for you in some way. So that's basically the new coercion system um, because intimidation was just completely rotten. <laughs> it's... It was, it was worthless, so. Um, moving on, okay, so I've completely reworked the Obeya discipline. Um, Obeya 2, Warding the Beast, now grants you a plus one to stamina as well as the plus two frenzy check, which is what it had before. Um, a lot of people were complaining because Obeya didn't start getting good until Obeya level three, uh, but now it's actually really good at Obeya 2. Obeya 5's been completely reworked. Um, I completely replaced Wrath of Heaven, and instead, uh, the discipline is called uh, Golconda, which uh, makes it so that you no longer use blood um, to sustain your undead body. So you, you no longer blood drain for the rest of the game. It's always on. You don't have to use blood to do it, but you will no longer have blood drain, and that's reaching Golconda. Um, so very, very cool. I love the new Obeya discipline for the Salubri. Super excited. I also updated the Obeya description, explaining that the previous levels stack on top of each other because I guess that was kind of confusing some people. Uh, so I took care of that. The last thing of this section of new content are the casting animations for uh, De, De Moinen, uh, Quetus, Serpentis and Thanatosis. Um, something that a, a, a very talented map designer and uh, Bloodline scripter named Enten Shrek, um, he's, he's working on the, uh, the Prelude mods uh, along with Wesp and some other guys. And uh, he had uh, figured out a way so that when you cast certain disciplines, the arm raises up. And it looks really freaking cool. Well, he helped me 
to do that for some of the disciplines of those four uh, of those four different discipline sets. And not only that, I took it a step further, but I did particles, particle effects for the right hand when it comes up. And it just, it just looks awesome. As you can see from the uh, videos there, it just looks really freaking good. It really looks like the characters coming alive and casting and it just, I don't know, I'm really, really excited about it. I think it looks awesome. Okay, so uh, looking at the other new content here, uh, these series of changes are more or less just like a cosmetic sort of thing. Um, so in the uh, World of Darkness uh, character sheet, there is no knowledge called scholarship. It's actually called linguistics. And because I'm trying to make the final nights as close to canon World of Darkness as I can, I went ahead and changed the name scholarship over to linguistics. Um, but then that made me kind of look at the research feat which didn't really make as much sense so i ended up changing that name to to the literacy feat so research feat is now called the literacy feat then everything got out of alphabetical order and because i'm kind of a <laughs> anal kind of person i wanted the feats to be in alphabetical order so i ended up changing the lock picking feat to the burglary feat which actually makes sense because the lock picking feat used to be just lock you know picking locks that's it that's that's all it did is it got you into places but in the final nights uh lock picking actually does so much more than just get you into different places it also there's there's boxes as i mentioned earlier there's boxes all over the game different safes that you're able to break into to earn money and different items a, you know, different kind of stuff like that. So burglary is a lot more of an appropriate feat name than just simple lock picking. Uh, sneaking was changed to illusion, which uh, comes from the word elusiveness, um, the ability to not be seen or not be caught, um, which again fit into the alphabetical order because sneaking starts with an S. So I changed it to illusion. Haggle was changed to barter, which means the exact same thing. It's just a different word. And it starts with a B. So once again, we're looking at, um, you know, an alphabetical order kind of thing. The intimidate fee, as you know, I just showed you the entire coercion system was renamed to coercion. So that's, you know, kind of self-explanatory. Now, another thing that I did where there were two categories, two different feet categories. One was called mental which makes absolutely no sense considering all of those uh, feats in that category are actually social feats. Uh, so I just renamed it to social. And then the covert feats, which I'm not sure how you say scholarship or lingu uh, linguistics are considered covert. So I changed that feat category to expertise. So hopefully that makes sense for you guys. Um, looking at this uh, new content slide here, um, I enhanced the main menu graphics. Um, what I did is I just added some shadowing behind some of the names and uh, some of the uh, graphical icons. And I just think the main menu looks like it pops more. It looks better to me. Before, without the shadowing, it looked really flat. and. Now it looks a little bit more three-dimensional in my opinion. Uh, another change or another new content feature is that I dr drastically reduced the prices of Sylvia Black's Masquerade Redemption. Sylvia Black is a TFN exclusive NPC found in the tattoo shop and she is able to clean your masquerade violations in exchange for money. She has contacts all around Los Angeles and she can do that. But the problem is it costs a thousand dollars in order to clean up a masquerade violation. That is way too much for TFN because money is really hard to come by. So now it starts at $800 and depending on your uh, barter feat, if you have a barter of 10, you can get that price reduced all the way down to $25. So you can actually keep on violating the masquerade, pay 25 bucks and she makes it go away. If you have a barter skill of 10. Another, uh, another new content feature is the Solocept, um, which is an occult item. 
it uh, the price was reduced from eight fifty to six hundred and fifty dollars. Um, you still buy it from Mr. Ox in Chinatown, but that allows you to get extra experience every time you earn experience points of three or more. So um, the price reduction just kind of made sense. Uh, I was talking to something compass about it, and he's kind of the one who gave me the idea. Um, I also removed all the dialogue options for the old Camarilla edition blood dolls that I had added during the Camarilla edition years. Um, the, the blood dolls are still there. You just can't talk to them now. So that's a new new piece of content, I guess. Uh, another feature is that I rewrote many of the loading screen tips. Um, most of the loading screen tips that I did a rewrite or added to feature the new uh, barter, coercion, uh, the different feats that you're able to do stuff with. So now you can read those during loading screens. Um, another another new content is that some of the in-game art portraits are now reskinned in high definition. And I want to thank Vampire Not Nonsense, who is an awesome texture artist on the Nexus Mods website. Um, they did an amazing job on um, some of the art portraits that were really, really fuzzy and very low definition. It didn't look very good. They went in and just reskinned it in super high definition and even added uh, like kind of a kind of a texture to it so it looks like it, it, it's on an actual canvas. It looks really, really good. And I want to thank uh, Vampire Nonsense for doing that and allowing us to use uh, their artwork. So thank you. Um, another thing too is like 10 years ago, uh, computers weren't nearly as powerful as they are now. And people were complaining about the rain fog effects in Santa Monica whenever it would rain. It was making the frames per second uh, really, it, you know, it was, it was taking a big hit. And so I removed the rain fog effects. Well, it's 2020 now. Uh, I think it's time to bring those rain fog effects back into Santa Monica. Computers are a lot more powerful now. And I also did an improvement. So it actually looks better than it did in vanilla. Uh, the last thing that I did uh, was I over or overhauled that terrible blue and red sky in downtown Los Angeles. It looked terrible. And for years I had to look at it and so did you. And it was just miserable. So I did us all a favor. I completely overhauled it, reskinned it. Um, and in fact, in the end game credits, you have to look at that sky then too. So it's not just when you're in downtown LA, but after you beat the game, it's the last thing you see. And it just looked terrible. But if you see now, it's got the moon and it's got all those clouds and it's, you know, the 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 kind of misty clouds are whipping around and everything. It just looks amazing now. I'm so excited that the downtown L.A. sky just looks like this. So uh, I hope you guys like it, too. Um, anyways, thanks so much for watching this video. And this is it for the new content of TFN. Uh, look for uh, the how to install video that's going to be released here in a few weeks, along with the game manual. Uh, I'm going to be going through the game manual with you guys and then look for a release date. I should be announcing that actual day here in the next few weeks. And along with that, uh, the uh, video alpha test let's plays by me and something compass and uh, JT Corp. So look for those. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Zero Morph out. Mm -hmm.